You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of our show, Newcomers Town Mayor Pat Cale and Fiscal Officer Lisa Steitler talk about what's going on in the city. Dr. Richard Hall stops by to talk about Mitty's Career and Technology Centers and Brian Williams with the Red Cross has the details on an upcoming blood drive at Cambridge High School. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Hey, welcome to a brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you where we always do at U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge, and we always hope that you're having a good day. We really do. Um, Pat Cadle is the mayor of Newcomerstown. Lisa Steitler is the fiscal officer for Newcomerstown. They both joined me on Talk of the Town. Good to see you guys again. Good to see That's you right. again. And good to see you. you. It's been probably about a year, yes. maybe, or something yeah. like that. So um, let's talk about uh, the state of Newcomerstown. How about that? I know that's what you wanted to focus on. We have, we have a lot of good things happening. We just finished up the Cy Young Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, Kind of got washed out Friday night, I think everybody did, but uh, Saturday and Sunday came through beautifully. We had nice crowds. I think all the vendors made money and that's part of the program. You want yeah. everybody to have a good time and uh, get ready for next year now for that one. Well, I know that you're doing a lot more. Uh, last year you had the activities through the entire year, you know, um, and um, do you find that people like that and are they, they taking a hold of the things that you're doing? I think one of the nicest things that's happened that we're seeing is you're, you're getting an attitude change. You know, we, we were down in the kind of down in the dumps for a long time and, and uh, people necessarily weren't proud to be from newcomers town. And I think that's, that's one of the neat things that's happening is we're seeing more of that pride. We're seeing people fixing things up. Uh, they're seeing things get changed uh, for the better. They see new businesses coming in um, and they see that we're, we're kind of going after the properties that need to fix themselves up or be gotten rid of. So it's one of those things where you, you want to instill some pride in your town and, and I think we've got that coming back. And, and Lisa, you know, that turnaround that you guys are seeing, you know this yourself because you've been involved with it, it kind of starts from the fiscal side of it, doesn't it? Absolutely. How, yeah. how have you addressed that? What, what are some of the things, the positive things that have turned Newcomers Town around? Uh, we've looked at some some of the bills that we were paying, um, like our insurance, we've joined Ohio Municipal League to help get a discount to help save the village of money on property insurance and health insurance. Um, Changing banks. Change, yeah, we switched banks, so now we're getting a, a higher interest on our investments that we have with the bank. That's been a huge difference and I oh go ahead I'm she's sorry. she's been able to manage some change in policies that um, we've needed that we haven't ever had before uh, so you have things in better organized fashion um, the just the, the change that she's been able to make in our in our general fund um, we have easily twice as much money as we did before that we were in that physical emergency that because of so, and it was more mismanagement than it was sure. uh, the loss of money or not the lack of money um, but yeah, she, she basically runs the show as far as the financial end of things, and she does a great job. She knows what she's doing and, and gets asked for advice from other places too. That is great. You know yourself, because you've had to face this, both of you, that when, you're, when, you're, when things are down, on a downturn, um, you can either let them go exactly as they have been going and the ship's never gonna get righted, or you go in and make the tough decisions. Was that a hard thing to do? to make those decisions that are gonna turn things around. It was out of necessity, wasn't it? Yeah, I just think you do what you know is the right thing to do. And you, you, if you have to force change, then you do that. And we've, we've had a lot of changes. Um, but ultimately, it, it, in my mind, it comes down to the people you have working for you. Mm -hmm. And we have four great department heads. Lisa's one of them, mm -hmm. our street, water, and, and police departments. And we've had good people in those positions before, but I don't think we've ever had four that were this good all at the same time. Yeah. And they, they've risked it by following me and, and what we want to do. And, and, and a lot of us think the same way. Is, and you, you have to progress, but you have to think about the future and where you want to be. I, I go back, the, the phrase one accord comes into mind. Mm -hmm. If you're in one accord, you can get things done, right? And, and that's, that's what's nice, I think. Um, and I think the people see it too, um, to that point. And I think that's, we have more people coming and, and volunteering or asking if they can help or coming up with ideas. Um, 
we tell them if there's something wrong, call us because if we don't see it, we don't know to fix it. Um, sometimes you can't fix it. Sometimes sure. you got to look outside for different ideas. Sure. And, and um, but right now we're we're progressing very well. Um, we're farther along than I ever thought we'd be in three years, That's two great. and a half years. That um, is awesome. And uh, we have more ideas and more things coming down the road. Lisa, what kind of satisfaction do you get seeing things turn around? It's a, it's a good feeling to be able to see things looking better and employees happier and residents, you know, hearing the compliments, that makes you feel good. That's, that's a good thing. If you can get the people yeah. seeing the vision, there's no stopping anything, really. You know, well, they become part of it. It become part yeah. of the whole thing. You wanted to talk about uh, a dedication that you've got coming up. That's pretty pretty big deal. We we have probably one of the biggest days we'll ever have in Newcomers Town. <laughs> um, on August eighteenth uh, at at one o'clock, the the premise of it we're our Gateway Festival is the third weekend of August. We're, this is our second year. We we learned a lot from our mistakes of the first year, and we're really excited about it. But. Um, Last, last fall, a, a group called 11 Warriors went through our museum and didn't know that we were the home of Woody Hayes. Woody mm -hmm. Hayes grew up and graduated from Newcomers Town mm -hmm. and uh, we're real impressed with what we have, but they said, would you like a statue? Sure, you know, everybody <laughs> like a statue. Yeah. Um, hmm. But they didn't have the money for it. And he said, well, they started a GoFundMe page for a statue, a bronze statue of Woody Hayes. Oh, cool. Life size and, and um, by January, they had, it, it was going to cost $40,000. By January, they had $22,000, and that's when it started picking up momentum. By about the first week of May, it was paid for, wow. just through the, the GoFundMe page. And uh, so then we started talking about a dedication, and one of the things that happened was we thought, let's try and get Archie Griffin to be our keynote speaker, and he accepted. Oh, awesome. Now it's really getting big. Now, the, yeah, it is. The alumni associations um, are, have now sent letters out to all their, their members saying, hey, in Newcomers Town, they're going to dedicate a statue to Woody Hayes. And, and our theme is bringing Woody home. Yeah. And so um, we started it. We were going to have it at the museum. But as, as things started building, we knew there wasn't going to be any way. We're, we're expecting over 1,000 to 1,500 people to come to it. Um, we're going to have it down at the football stadium, which is more appropriate for Woody, mm -hmm. I sure. think. And sure. uh, so we're going to have a dedication down there. Um, the sculptor will be there. The, the a member of the 11 Warriors will be there. Um, Stephen Hayes, Woody's son, is going to speak also. Um, and you, you don't think, but he's almost 80 years old. Oh, wow. You, know, you, you don't think of you old as Woody's son. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have Archie Griffin as the, the keynote speaker. Wow. Um, Sounds great. So it's, it's going to be a big day. When they come out of the stadium, the festival's right there. Okay. So we're looking for a big day for our festival and as well as the dedication. A lot of great things going on in Newcomers Town. If you haven't been there lately, take a drive. You know, find out what's going on. Pat Cadle and Lisa Steitler, thanks for coming on the show. Thank good you. to see you again. Thank you. And congratulations on the good things that are happening. Keep moving forward. All right. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. So don't go away. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. 
Welcome back and thank you so much for watching Talk of the Town. Well, I'm uh, excited to introduce my next guest. That's Dr. Richard Hall, who is the superintendent at Mideys Career and Technology Centers in Buffalo. They have the Buffalo and Zanesville campuses. Good to have you on our show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Perry. And um, let's just start for those who don't know what Mideys is all about. Let's, let's start there and go from there. Well, we are what it says, what our name says we are. We are a career and technology center. Uh, we offer hands-on career type programs for students, uh, both at the high school and the adult education level. And uh, we have 32 programs for the high school uh, age students uh, that are typically junior and senior year programs. They're two year programs. We do take a handful of sophomores and allow them to go through some career exploration, but predominantly uh, junior and seniors attend our Mideast campuses. It's changed over the years. I know it has, and uh, I wanted to address the fact, and we talked about this just a few minutes ago, that a lot of people still see it as just a technical school. Uh, that has changed over the years, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. So uh, you, You'll hear the buzzwords quite often, uh, career or college ready. Uh, we pride ourselves at Mideast on when a student walks through the doors to graduate Mideast, they are college and career ready. Uh, we offer College Credit Plus just like the local high schools would if they stayed there. And we also offer that career background and that career training, that technical training, so that they're ready to enter the workforce, enter the military, or go on to college when they graduate from Mideast. Okay. Uh, the good thing is, is you can get all of that really close to home here. Absolutely. And uh, Mideast did a renovation project about six years ago now, uh, six to seven years, and refurbished everything they have. We have top-notch equipment. Uh, my biggest adjustment when I became superintendent there three years ago was signing requisitions for $150,000, $250,000 to provide top-notch equipment in mm -hmm. those labs. Mm -hmm. And uh, business and industry would tell you that our students operate and have a the opportunity to learn on equipment that's just as good or better than what some of the business and industry have. And that's very important to be cutting edge because that's what they're going to be out going out into. Absol edge. Absolutely. Uh, we, we offer cutting edge training on, on brand new equipment, but we also realize that not every uh, business and industry is going to have brand new equipment. So we keep some of our older equipment too and we cross train on oh, okay. both of those okay. uh, because we don't want to, you know, train so current that those businesses that have the older equipment, we want our students to know how to use uh, that as well. That's a, great, that, that, that's a very great point, too. Let's talk uh, about some of the programs available. Well, we, we still have openings, uh, Perry, believe it or not, for the 18-19 school year. For example, with the Zanesville campus, we have applied engineering and machining. We have spots available there, which would, uh, would be known as precision machining uh, mm -hmm. to some veterans there, uh, mm -hmm. parents. Uh, we have con computer support, electronic technology, a vacancy there, digital media. We could take a few more. Uh, electrical trades and technologies, would be, we have openings there. Heating, air conditioning, refriger refrigeration, uh, we have openings there. Natural resources, we have openings there. And robotics, automation, and design. And, and at the Buffalo campus, we still have openings in auto technology, construction technology, and we added a uh, cybersecurity and computer technology program. We've changed that program a little bit, uh, Buffalo, the last couple of years, and focusing a little bit more on cybersecurity, because that's a buzzword you hear, and, and with the age of technology, that's mm -hmm. going to continue to grow. So we've tried to adjust mm -hmm. to that, that need as well. This is one of those um, ground floor kind of things to get in on, which it's just going to get more enhanced, and it, like you said, it's going to grow. Uh, because everything is digital now so and absolutely and that's one thing we're trying to do is look at our programs and stay current and update them and uh, change them as as the market changes to provide job opportunities for students in the future I like the the fact that you you have all the technical and technological courses but you still uh, keep at your core the hands-on stuff you know because some people are going to go out and get a job you know and you're training them to be able to go out and, and get a good job Absolutely, and that's that's a focus point of, of the career center. Is they spend a half of day, the students spend a half a day in academics. The other half a day, they're in that lab with that hands-on approach. And you know, sometimes it's just as important to learn what you do not want to do. And uh, but it creates an avenue where students know what they may not want to do, but also have an avenue to maybe put themselves through school uh, by utilizing the trade they've learned, even though they may not make a lifetime out of it. It allows them to save on college debt because they mm -hmm. know how to do something. They can pay their way through college and work, work part-time as oh, something they learn at the Career Center. So, that's a very good point. Um, you know, we, we obviously want students to learn what they 
know how to want to do and know how to do, but it's okay to figure out this isn't for me. We're okay with that and, and maybe go another route educationally or another career tech program that we offer. That's okay. So we try to do that and uh, we, we offer everything to all students. We, we, we are very diverse in how we are approached to things. Uh, as I said earlier, you can go to Mideast. Uh, uh, the same, about the same percentage of our students go on to college. Mm -hmm. uh, that would if you attended a local high school, so we mm -hmm. feel really good about that. Mm -hmm. We offer the same types of things that high mm -hmm. schools offer. Um, you know, students can go back and be involved in athletics or clubs at their local high school. Uh, we don't want to do, create any barrier uh, that mm -hmm. would be a reason for a student not to come to Mideast. So we're very flexible in our approach with that kind of thing, and we want to serve the students the best we can. In, in wrapping it up today, uh, give our uh, viewers the benefits of being a part of Mideast. Mideast is a great place to go. It's a, it's a different type of education that they've never had before. Uh, you, you, you know, for those that don't like sitting in class all day, and that was, you know, I was one of those folks, uh, you're only in the academic piece a half a day, and the rest of the time you're in the lab, and it, that is a really uh, selling point for us. You learn a hands-on skill that you, that, you, that you have for the rest of your life. Um, even if you don't go into fixing cars for a living, you mm -hmm. can fix your own car, which will save sure. you money. Oh, so yeah. uh, it's a lifelong skill, regardless of what trade and what career tech program you get into, whether that's your life, life's work or not, it's a skill you have forever. How can folks find out more about Mideast? They can visit our website at uh, mideastctc.org, uh, or they can obviously call us at 454-0105, and uh, we'll certainly... Uh, point folks in the right direction and if anyone would like to come take a visit and I would encourage our students uh, we do eighth grade tours for all the eighth grade uh, eighth graders in the area in the fall and then we also have our sophomore experience where every sophomore uh, from the sc schools that we serve we have 13 partner schools we we uh, allow those to students to come in in November okay. and and look at Mideast and give them a a great up-close look at what we have to offer. All right, Dr. Richard Hall, thank you so much for being here today. All right, Appreciate thank it. you. And we'll be back with more of the show, Talk of the Town, right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. The Old Country Loft features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash yrptv and be sure to subscribe. Hey, welcome back to Talk to the Town, coming to you from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Well, I don't know if, uh, if you may have heard the phrase, uh, give the gift of life, give blood. Yes. We're going to talk about giving blood right now. And uh, joining me is Brian Williams, who is an account rep for uh, donor recruitment for the American Red Cross. Good to have you on Hi. the show. Thank you. And, you know, we, all, we always hear about that. When you donate blood, you are given the gift of life, aren't you? Yes, you definitely are. Um, the, the need for blood is constant. 
Um, and when someone gets blood, it's going to go to someone that actually needs it, and usually it's in a life-saving type of situation. Um, and basically what we always tell people is for every unit you donate, you could save up to three lives. Yeah. Um, because with that one unit is broke down to three different components of the blood and actually can go to three different people. I know you wanted to focus on an event that's coming up first and we're going to get into some other things, but you're having a, a blood drive. Tell us about that. Yes, we're having a blood drive coming up. Uh, it'll be Monday, July 9th. It'll be at the Cambridge High School at the gymnasium. Uh, it'll be 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, it's kind of a special drive. It's what we call a Cedar Fair drive. And Cedar Fair is a company that owns several amusement parks. Mm -hmm. Um, the ones close to us would be Kings Island and Cedar Point. Mm -hmm. um, every donor that does donate um, will receive a free admission ticket to either Cedar Point or That's Kings Island. a little Island. twist on things. A little twist yeah. on things, yeah. It's, pretty, it's a high value ticket. We oh, don't is. give out something that substantial, but um, being the summertime, we do suffer with our donations and uh, we try to come up with special you know, events or pro programs that'll encourage people to come out. Well, this should encourage, yeah, it's just a little, maybe a little catalyst to get people to come out. Correct. And, and you know, we blood. don't want people to come out just for the ticket, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if that's something that, you know, gets them to think about giving blood or it might, you know, they already have plans of going or would like to go, you know, we can help them out in that manner also. Why is it that we typically think about donating blood around the holidays, but, but summertime, are we just so busy to want, we just don't think yeah, about it? Yeah, we really suffer in the summer. Uh, there's a number of factors. Uh, one, schools are out. Um, schools and colleges and high schools actually count for 20% of our blood oh, donation okay. supply, which yeah. people are very surprised by that. Um, but we have some very good um, schools around that do contribute to that. Uh, people are on summer vacation. And in the summertime, you get so busy uh, with your own personal things, vacations, working around the house, things like that. But in actuality, in the summertime, if you think about it, um, the need for blood sometimes even rises. Uh, there's a lot more people out on the road, mm -hmm. so unfortunately there's more accidents. Mm -hmm. um, in our area, um, we have a lot more farmers that are out mm -hmm. in the fields, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. might get injured that way also. So the need for blood is constant. Um, the stat we always like to bring up in the United States, every two seconds someone needs a blood, don blood donation. So That's staggering. Yeah. That's staggering. That, that really drives it on home. What's the process like? Um, if somebody is going to come to uh, Cambridge High School to donate blood, what's that process like? Uh, what we do is when you come in, you'll register. Um, hopefully you've already scheduled yourself an appointment and we can talk about how you do that in a minute. Okay. Um, but when you come in, you'll register, you show them your ID. Um, if you don't have a donor card, you can use a driver's license, something like that, and you'll sign in. Um, mm -hmm. We have some pre-read information that you need to do. Um, it'll tell you a little bit about donating blood and some of the things that might disqualify you um, that you might not know about. Um, once you read that, um, they take you back to a screened off area and we do what we call a health history. Uh, it's very quick. Basically, we do a blood pressure, temperature, pulse, and we'll check your hemoglobin, which is your iron levels. Okay. Uh, if all that checks out, there's a, about a 50 questions you need to answer. Basically, they're personal health history questions that you answer. Um, you do it on a computer mm -hmm. um, by yourself so that you know it's totally private. Um, if all that works out well, we take you out to the donation area. Um, you get up on a table, you can lie down, sit up, whatever you prefer. They cleanse an area in your arm and actually bring, begin the donation process. The actual process only takes about eight to 10 minutes. Okay. Um, once that's done, if everything is, it goes fine and you're feeling okay, you can go and you have a snack, a drink, juice, water. We provide all of that and then you can be on your way. Okay. Before we, uh, forget what's how how do people schedule okay there's several different ways um, you can call 1-800-RED CROSS you can visit our website at redcrossblood.org or you can download our app which a lot of people are doing we have an app you just go to you know, your app store or your google play mm -hmm. uh, type in blood donor app and it'll come up we have our own app from american red cross blood donors um, and it's very convenient very easy we've already had over a million downloads of that app uh, it's becoming very popular you can schedule appointments. You can have your donor card on there. It tells you how many units you've donated, your blood type. So it's very informative. How often can someone donate blood? Uh, they can do it every 56 days. Okay. Um, and that's if they just give a regular whole unit of blood. Okay. Um, other ways, we do have what we call a power way, where you actually give two whole units of blood. And this is going to be one of those events, those correct? Are, those are ones you can do also. Um, a lot of people that give blood for are familiar with their power way donation. Um, but if you have questions about that, it's available at our website. Or when you call, you can ask questions about it also. You know, and, and think about it, you know, giving the gift of life, every two seconds somebody needs blood. I mean, just as I said those words, 
you know, four or five seconds went by. Yep. People are using blood and needing blood, and this yeah. is your chance that you can do that. So yes. make sure you get involved with the American Red Cross uh, Blood Drive at Cambridge High School on July 9th from noon to 6 p.m. Yes. All right, Brian, thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you very much Appreciate for what me. you guys do. Too. Thank you. All right, back to wrap it up right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and, and play. play. That is going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you for watching and thanks to our guests, Pat Cadle, Lisa Steitler, Dr. Richard Hall, and Brian Williams. Well, we're getting closer to Boomerama. Boomerama! It's uh, going to take place at the Cambridge City Park on July 4th, and you can uh, hear live radio coverage during the event. And so if you can't be there, you can know what's going on. And uh, just we want to encourage you to have a wonderful and safe 4th of July holiday. Please don't drink and drive. Okay, if you're going to be out there drinking, which you probably may be are, have a designated driver, somebody who can get you home safely, okay, and get somebody else home safely as well. For producer, director Adam Green and Perry Bronich, and we'll see you next time on Talk of the Town.